Uh, ya, Cikgu? Uh, uh, I can't see the sharing for my PowerPoint. Um, I have my PowerPoint open. Okay. But I can't see uh, the option to share my screen. Okay, okay. Wait there. Eh, boleh cuba lagi sekali cikgu? Okay, hold on. Missing. Missing. So, oh, desktop. Okay. Hmm. Okay, something to do with the access. Okay, I think something to do with my computer access to. Okay, hold on. I have to leave first and then I come back. Okay. Okay, where is my? Hmm. It's weird. I still cannot see the option to share my PowerPoint. Um, how do I get this? Ah, uh, but share button ada. Share screen button. But Yes, and then okay. it come out as desktop one, whiteboard, and then, oh yeah, there's, now there is a Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, that's okay. so funny. Like, it, uh, sometimes it doesn't allow you to show yeah. whatever you want to show. So that's a problem. Okay, let's see. Let's just do this. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Hello, I'm, am I talking alone by myself or is there anyone there? I know that is... Good morning, teacher. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Uh, uh, I have uh, one first thing first. I want to actually ask a few questions. I have a quick survey on my next slide. So, um, shall I actually... Google, uh, can you uh, do? Do you have access to your phone, or do you want me to copy paste the quick survey link? Uh, let me just copy that and then add the chat group. So then you can also do that. Whoever have the access through scan, like if you have phone, then you scan. Can you do that quickly as well? Good morning. Okay, good morning. Thank Mingzi and Farisha Atika. So I have paste the link. Uh, for the survey is a very simple um, today I prefer to be a warming up session so I don't actually put anything much on my slide because I I am not sure about my crowd like all 
seven of you, whether you are in form four or form five, or like uh, you prefer to me speaking English or Bahasa. So I am a former lecturer at medical school. So I teach medical student before. So um, my specialty is physiology. So uh, I learn, uh, I know how to teach physiology and I also studied pharmacology. And um, prior to my PhD, that was my PhD uh, program and prior to Prior to my PhD, I actually, uh, I also studied pathology. So I think nowadays, um, blood testing or, or testing, it's something that you, I think whether you are old or young, all of you know that you have to do some testing. So like COVID-19, uh, RT-PCR testing. So all this is part of the biological test. So um, I have that background um, in the laboratory. So you will see that my content might be a little bit skewed towards that. Um, so uh, other than that, I know at your level, at the secondary school, what will be covered is also the plant and animal. So there is some element uh, I did make a quick summarize for today. So mostly all of the form four, um, form four uh, topics over here. And then uh, just a quick uh, example picture uh, for you to actually have some idea on what uh, you will be studying in uh, biology. And also uh, there is uh, elements of a uh, plant so those who are interested in for later on to do ecology or uh, become plant physiologists, for example, there is some a topic uh, focusing on plants. So have everyone uh, answered the, the survey? Let me see the chat because I have uh, okay, cool. Okay. So um, occasionally I will try if you cannot follow my uh, medium of language, like if you want me to uh, translate, because I know that uh, it's not Cik Gumimi, it's uh, the administrator. Okay. So can I get a quick notification from everyone if you have done your survey? Because the survey will ask whether you are learning in Bahasa or English. Because that will give me idea of overall, generally my student, are they actually studying in English or in Bahasa? So everyone, can can you at least type yes? I have I've done the survey. Done. Okay. Good. Good. Thank. And done. Good. Right. Shall. Uh, and the rest of you for. Four of you, there is seven, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, there is a uh, six because excluding the admin. How about the rest of you? Good morning, Ikmal. So currently, we are, I'm doing a quick survey. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm currently actually posting the survey on um, on how I want to get to know you better. What is the subject that you find it difficult? Uh, what have you learned in biology so far? And then what do you actually study most? What is your favorite topic? So, 
So I'm going to just give another one more minute and then I will proceed to go through the topics that is covered in the biology. So for those who, of you who have just joined, uh, this class is um, organized by ICRA Education Hub. So I'm actually invited teacher. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, my alias, Cikgu Alin, but I'm actually uh, professionally, I'm Dr. Azlina. Um, I have a PhD in pharmacology and physiology. So I have a, a background doing clinical. So throughout, uh, up, um, I'm biomedical scientist uh, by training and I have been doing clinical trials so far uh, throughout my, up on my graduation. And then I did some uh, animal model experiment. And then uh, at the moment, I actually working more into health policy and system research. So I work together with the ministry to look into the, for example, now I'm working more towards uh, achieving the immunity head for COVID-19. So a lot of work to do at the system level at the moment. But uh, for your level, the study might be, if I actually going too much into the topic, please let me know. But I essentially base my uh, my teaching on the textbook. So, of course, the first thing, let me just put back my slide bigger. So, first of all, um, I think most of you will have access to the textbook. So, this is DLP, Dual Language Program Biology Form 4 and form five. So there, there is two, uh, two format, one is in English. So another one in Bahasa. So there is a, a, essentially the same content, but it is written in English and Bahasa. So my suggestion is my understanding that when you take up the, is it, when it is the LP, that's mean, you can actually answer the question in either Bahasa or English. So you have the choice to, to do either, uh, it, it is acceptable. And if you have the capacity to understand English better, my suggestion is to study in English because when you actually move to uh, after SPM, uh, STPM or Messi collection and the university, you will have a lot of your reference textbook in English. There is, there are some um, books, textbooks or reference in Bahasa, but the content might not be that much as the one in English. Okay, so get uh, familiarize with the English terminology. And I'm sure it's not that difficult because your generation have a good access to internet, okay? I am comfortable with both um, because I am a UKM graduate. So when I was doing my bachelor degree, I have the biology or the study or the medical term in Malay Bahasa. But uh, when I actually go for my master's degree and PhD, uh, it, it was in English and I spent about almost six years in UK. So some of my work might be a little bit British than uh, other people, okay? So I, I, I have this um, slide uh, working on the content. So I actually get the... Uh, message last night from the CEO saying, I have some student from BLP, which means some of you might prefer English and I am comfortable speaking in English. So I actually do all my slides a little bit, change it to English, but I also put uh, a slide, one slide in Bahasa, okay? 
So side by side, this is the content kandungan in bahasa. So you, awak ada kat sini tingkatan empat dan tingkatan lima. So let's go for the English version. So you have in form four, you have two main subtopic, fundamentals of biology. And then the second one is physiology of human and animal. This is where I was doing a lot. I teach medical students for almost four years uh, working on physiology. So I essentially know this topic by heart. Like I do practical and um, teach it in detail for the medical student in year one and year two, as well as the optometry student, foundation student. So if you want to have some insight on what is your sort of um, career pathway uh, in glimpse of it, uh, what you want to do with biology after you finish your school, you can ask me. So I'm whatever question that I can answer, I will try my best to answer, okay? And in form five, you have three main stop, subtopic. First one is the physiology of flowering plant. So you will see that the in form, four, form five, the uh, part of it, the structure is reflective to the one in the human and animal, but it's focusing on the plant. And then the second subtopic is the ecosystem and environment. So you have the uh, topic on biodiversity. So you have um, the uh, many different things, the varsity uh, when it comes to the living things. And there is an ecosystem. And uh, of course, most importantly nowadays is to talk about sustainability. So in uh, Malay, it's called Kelestarian. And in English, it's, it's sustainability. And lastly is the inheritance and genetic technology. So you can see that this has become very important nowadays because that's how they create or they generate the uh, vaccination, vaccine uh, material. So uh, you will see that in your family, some of you already gone for the vaccination. So all this essentially use the genetic technology, okay? So um, basically the first thing first, when it comes to, so uh, what I have laid out in my today's presentation is to go through bit by bit of the subtopic. So uh, mostly superficial, just a touch. And then we will go through bit by bit in detail in the coming classes. So uh, don't worry if you find it, um, um, because there are some topic that is not covered yet, but it's just to somehow introduce you to overall topic that is uh, structured in your syllabus, okay? So first thing, of course, uh, what is biology? Uh, I think all your teachers have explained is come from the two words, two Greek words is bios and logos, life and study, which means the study of life. That's why for your biology is essentially looking at the study of human, the study of animal as well as plant, okay? So you have all these, um, uh, what they call uh, uh, core uh, specialization sub course topics in uh, biology, botany, microbiology, ecology, physiology, and genetic. So these are all five main core um, specialty listed in your textbook, okay? And uh, of course, with this, you have the options to explore the career in biology. So for microbiology, you'll be microbiologist. 
And if you actually study even further in microbiology, there is um, studies on helmin. Helmin is the uh, nematode, the, the worm. And then you can also go for the bacteria, of course. So the basic one, the bacteria is, if you are interested to look at the uh, control of like, for example, if you're working in the water plant, so you want to make sure that the water supply is safe. So you actually do uh, analysis on the water supply to see whether it is contained pathogen. So pathogen is the harmful micro, okay? And uh, apart from that, like for the, Still in microbiology, you can also actually become food technologies. So in this area, like you will actually focus on food production often like involving fermentation, for example. So these are actually utilizing uh, anaerobic um, uh, bacteria, for example. These are the thing that you will actually look into in detail. So botany is something where if you are interested to look at the plants, so uh, it's also a promising um, field where we lead people to actually uh, give more information on what happened to the plant, like in agriculture, how to actually produce a good crop, for example. Now you have, now is the durian season. So you want to produce a good, durian flavor, for example. So these are the things that you, you need botanists to actually tell you which are a good progeny, for example. So physiology, my field, um, although I'm actually more into teaching, so of course, if you like studying like me, you can actually be, can become teacher or lecturer or professor, okay? Uh, there is no limit to it. So you can even come become consultant and teach the subject. There is no boundaries when it comes to acquiring knowledge, okay? But in practical, it would be, I think the popular one nowadays is physiotherapist. So if you're interested um, to do some practical aspect of physiology, you will have the uh, you can actually work as physiotherapy. So physiotherapy is basically working on um, maneuvering and finding out what is the problem with the uh, support system, the skeletal system. So uh, often people come in with, for example, back pain. So with the back pain is you actually uh, look into in detail whether is the problem is with, is with the muscle or with the neurological system. So with this identification, then you actually uh, twitch the therapy based on the potential problem, okay? Next one is the genetics. So uh, this has also become quite popular and quite lucrative, I would say, because uh, nowadays, like I think even for COVID-19, you have two times of testing for you to essentially pass uh, to become a, a negative person, not, be, not become a person of uh, an investigation, for example. So you have that. All right. So in this topic, there is a lab safety looking into the rules, okay? Right now you have this, here is a very simple features uh, showing you that in lab rules, it will teach you the uh, essence of how you need to behave when you are in the lab, okay? So of course the first thing is to make sure you have the lab coat and then uh, make sure that you are wearing shoes. And then if you are handling something evaporating, potentially a uh, spark, like it can actually explode, you are uh, advised to actually wear goggle. And then you make sure that you have a proper uh, hand washing, okay? 
So the next one is the cell biology and organization. So in this topic, you have the uh, study looking into detail of uh, structure within the cell. So cell is basically the most simple, simple units in biology, living uh, unit in biology, okay? So this is an example of animal cells and plant. So basically in this topic, you have to know all the structure, what we call organelle. Uh, in the cell. So there is cell membrane, vacua, ribosome, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, nucleus, chromosome, Golgi complex. So please take note that Golgi complex is with capital G. So I still remember my supervisor told me that for her thesis, she got a very minor correction, which is putting capital G for Golgi complex. So she has to actually resubmit her thesis because of this. So take note whether it has to be a capital, but often you will see in the textbook clearly in the notes, okay? And then um, all this structure, what you will do at your level is very much to um, know, remember, all the structure and briefly know what is the function. But again, when you go for your STPM or matriculation, you will actually revisit all the structure, but into a bit more detail. And again, when you go for pre-med or you go for other health related subject um, course, for example, pharmacy or optometry, <clears throat> you will actually go looking into, again, this structure, there's not going to be any other structure. It's the same, unless suddenly everyone become mutated and become differently organized. But again, when it comes to studying structure or the function, we will go for the normal one, <clears throat> the original one. And there is another topic, which is called pathology which is the abnormal structure that you will study. So my field is physiology, which is the normal structure and the function. And then you will actually will come across uh, people specialized known as pathologists who will describe things abnormally. So in order for you to learn the abnormal one, you need to know the normal one, okay? <clears throat> So the next one is the movement of substances across a plasma membrane. So here is a very simplified dynamic picture showing you the movement of the substance, okay? What you will actually go through in this particular topic is to actually know different type of solute. So these molecule, when is actually in the uh, decomposition within the cells or outside of the cells, it calls salute. So these salute have different type. So whether it's a small, simple structure like water or whether, uh, or sugar, or it's something much more complex like, for example, a protein, a hormone, okay? And this picture over here is one of uh, the very popular um, experimental design to look into this aspect, the movement essentially, what is the application? So what you were actually taught, you'll be taught is to see whether the, the cells conditions is isotonic which means there is no movement between outside and inside. So you will not see. So it will have that uh, a normal maintained structure. And then you have the uh, condition where we call hypotonic. So in case of hypotonic, you will have the 
water movement going into the cells and for animal cell it can rupture because it's like balloon balloon when you actually blow it more and more and more and more it will actually stretch the cell membrane and it can burst okay and in this other side on the other spectrum however you have the what they call hypertonic so hypertonic means the water inside the cell come out from the cell so it become crooked crooked like thin and rigid like a very um, sort of a gross structure like this what we call crenation and you essentially this can happen if the salute outside the environment outside of the cells uh, the composition, the uh, concentrations of the solute outside is higher than inside of the cell. Okay, so when it comes to plant cells, this is a unique thing when it comes to plant cells. It has the cell wall that maintains the integrity of the cell structure. So although there is some ballooning, like you have this water filling up inside the cell, it is still maintain its structure without getting birth. So it will not rupture. However, like you can see same thing, although if you can see the inside, the water actually have come out from the cell and the structure is still maintained. They will look the same as a normal, okay? So let me see, this is already half an hour. Okay, for the next one is the chemical composition. So I essentially put all the main icon here. So the interesting part here is focusing on the elements uh, that is exist within the cells and throughout the circulation. So you will have the water, so water here, please let me drink first. So water is one of the component and it's the essential one because it's maintained the balance inside your body. And then next one is the carbohydrate. So the carbohydrate will be quite rich in, like here is the noodle and for some of you who don't eat rice, may, maybe you will eat bread. So it's also rich in carbohydrate. And then these are also a, a different type of bread, but all the grain, the rice has a rich in it. They are rich in carbohydrate, okay? And then uh, you have this, um, here is the concept, you'll be introduced to the concept of lipids, okay? Of course, if you actually Google and look simply in the general literature, you will see that it's called fat, but in biology, mostly they would use the word lipids. L-I-P-I-D-S, lipids. So in, in your um, works, your syllabus, they will introduce you on the saturated fat and unsaturated fat. So I, I'm not sure whether you have gone through here, but uh, in your class, hopefully you have. This is quite... Uh, the early subject, now is already July, but the idea is the saturated fat here is the so-called not good, bad, bad fat. And then you have the good fat or unsaturated fat uh, as the good one. The idea is not to discriminate these two, but to essentially tell you or to advise uh, people which are the one that you can eat in abundant plenty of it without worry of getting sick. And then another one was a desaturated fat. You don't really want 
to eat so much. Why? Because it can actually precipitate in your blood vessels. It can clog your blood vessels, creating problem like heart attack, heart diseases, or stroke. If actually the precipitate, so when it has your blood vessel thickening, what happened that, you know, the blood vessel it, it's like a pipe containing blood that gushing through it. So the blood essentially can actually uh, um, trigger the, the hardening of the blood vessel wall, what they call atherosclerosis, which then actually sheds some of the component becoming thrombi, thrombus. So these are like small, small particles that actually shed off from the thickening. And then if if actually block the vessel that's supplying your brain, it will actually become stroke. If you actually, if the particle go and block your coronary vessels, so the vessels that supply your heart, it will become, it will actually trigger heart attack or what we call myocardial infarct, okay? Oh, last but not least, not to forget the these other two, protein. So protein is basically your meat, your muscle. So you know, like if you actually see the movie, some people in starvation, and nowadays you have these people are getting starving and they're not eating good. And if you actually see all these um, uh, movie or trailer or those um, trailer movie, like when they starve, what the first thing they will want to do is to actually peel off the muscle, cut off some of the piece of the meat and eat. So basically it's the most nutritious part of your body, you have protein, okay? So similarly, like you are getting the source of protein from the animal meat, okay? And then uh, last but not least is the nucleic acid. So these are the basic form, basic structure that form DNA and RNA, okay? So the next topic would be the metabolism and enzyme. So what is covered in this topic is basically in more detail on the interaction between enzyme and substrate. So uh, I've, I've seen the uh, all subtopic, like what you need to remember, you memorize, I hope that you can understand first before you memorize that what are the optimal condition for the enzyme for them to actually react on the substrate. Not just, but there's one of the criteria, of course, to have the active binding site, the active site for the substrate to bind. But at the same time, it required an optimal um, condition, for example, the temperature, the uh, um, condition whether it's acidic or alkaline, and then uh, whether it has enough, you know, enough uh, quantity and so on. And interestingly, when it comes to the applications to it, what you will have is to apply the knowledge that you know in the previous topic, which is the all the component of carbohydrate, protein, lipid, all of this is on the activity of how it's essentially being broken down. Okay, so I actually put this slide because what I can see generally in this topic is to apply the topic before with the activities in enzyme. Because what happened is when it comes to metabolism, 
the first thing that you will metabolize is your food. So now let's have a quick um, survey to see what did you eat for your breakfast? I have not eaten my breakfast yet. I actually was busy preparing for my class this morning. Can everyone share with me what did you eat for your breakfast? There is the kitchen. Sandwiches, good. Oh, okay, this is the admin. Okay, sandwiches. Nasi goreng and ayam milo, okay. Good, that is full of carb. Hopefully you have that probably egg, which is the protein to go with. Conflict for breakfast, probably with milk, Faisal? Yes, indeed. Okay, yes. So that is protein. So all these essentially, um, you will actually look at it and on, oh, a cup of tea, so yeah, water. This is interesting because when it comes to tea, the oil is a plain water with some flavoring, but they have this bioactive compound, which are called, uh, there's a different green tea, is a uh, um, different, uh, different type of flavonoid, and black tea have a different type of flavonoid, so tiaflavine and uh, epigallate. So these two have like a, a different type of fermentation uh, at the product. But it's, although it is a plate wine without that so-called nutrient. So I think later on we will actually go to, to see the nutrition. So these carbohydrate, protein, lipid, uh, nutrient that you actually gain from the food, what your digestive system will do is to process it or metabolize it to make sure that it become a very uh, small unit that can be absorbed. So the thing is the uh, lower part of our abdomen over here, you have the portions that will absorb the nutrient from the food, but it has to be on a very simple format, right? Let's say, for example, like now I'm actually sitting on the chair, on the table, it's a big table, dining table, but for this table to actually come into my house, when it is being delivered, it cannot be actually in this sort of ready uh, structured big table. So they were actually December first, and then they will actually bring it through the door and then myself, I will actually assemble it. So the same thing is happening in our body. So from the food, it will get metabolized and the metabolism actually work together. So if you actually study in medicine, the first action, the first activity in the mouth, you have the physical activities chewing. So you have the activities to make sure that the food is essentially being chopped uh, and have a lots of surface for the uh, binding site, the, uh, the enzyme to act upon. So when you, it's being chopped all together and you have the, your stomach actually release uh, variety, that's a lot. In medicine, I teach my medical student uh, for one hour to only talk about the uh, enzyme in your stomach. And then another one hour talking about the enzyme from your intestine. And then another one hour to just talk about the basic nutrient. Each single lipids cover that we have at least one hour to talk about. But what you will have in your basic um, biology at your level at school 
you will all have it more simplified version. So you have to remember. Uh, because what I, I, I probably talk a lot here because when I actually teach the foundation student, you forgotten all your basic destructure, lipid, carbohydrate, and protein. Okay, let's not dwell so much on this. I actually like the topic on nutrition. Okay, next one is the cell division. So cell division is the topic where you will actually look into the cell cycle, G1, S, G2, M. We I will not go through this in detail at the moment here. Uh, we will actually go through, well, we'll see how it goes because I prefer to actually tackle the topic that you find difficult. Uh, if this is a difficult topic for you, we can spend a good one hour to go through this topic in detail. Okay, but the essence of this topic is to actually see the cell division, the cell is being divided. So from one cell to become two cell, to become four cell. So this is where you apply your mathematics. So one cell, when you divide it, become two. So this two cell divided further, it become four. So this is the application of the mathematics. Next one is the cellular respiration. So the cellular respiration actually looking into the, uh, the fact that you have the use of energy produ or produce energy. Okay, so these are a cartoon showing you the photosynthesis. So of course, the different when it comes to productions of the energy and of and use of the energy. <clears throat> oh, okay. Another thing that I noticed when it comes to this topic is that you have these uh, one good um, pages describing fermentation, meaning that you do need to be well versed with aerobic and anaerobic. So those using oxygen and without oxygen. So we will go through this in detail if we have the opportunity to go through this topic. Okay. So next is the second part. So we finished that just now. All of it is more on the basic uh, biology. Now it's starting to go into more systemic, like overall. Um, we are not talking about the detailed structure inside the small unit or organ, but this one is looking into the integration, more into the organ to system level. And <clears throat> what I noticed in your biology uh, syllabus is that some of it has the coverage on human and animal, and then some of it just in human, okay? Generally, it, there is a similarity, but the emphasis when it comes to having both human and animal, there is a good few pages comparing between the human and animal. So, Boy, the important thing when you go through this topic is to make sure that you are able to compare and contrast. So when it comes to compare and contrast, these are all the keyword for the examination. <coughs> Excuse me. You should be able to describe the smell similarity. So what is the thing that is similar between human and animal and the differences? What are the difference between the human and animal system? Okay, so these are the human being, one human example. So you have this concept of when it comes to respiratory system, respiration in general, you have this air coming in and air coming out. Okay, why we talk about air? Because 
A is what is the what you have what they call oxygen. We breathe in the air mainly for the oxygen. And often the breathe in what you have is your body actually will capture the oxygen. And in return, so this is like a butter trick. You have the capturing the oxygen, but at the same time, your body actually is re releasing CO2, carbon dioxide, okay? So this not only happening in the human, you will also have it in the animal, like the example emphasized in your syllabus is the fish, because of course, the oxygen is not only in the air, is also in the water because oxygen can also dissolve in the water. So what the fish will get is the water, but the system in the fish can capture the oxygen in the water, okay? Next one is the another interesting creature, the frog. So frog has this dual system they're actually capturing the oxygen not only through the normal lung like this, they also have these uh, exchange gases at their skin. So we are not this type of um, creature. We don't actually have the oxygen coming through our, our skin, but amphibian mostly, like or lots of it, but in particularly from they have the exchange of these gases through their skin in addition to breathe in and breathe out the air, okay? And other than that is the insect. So insect has slightly different structures. So they have this, what they call spiracle, like a hole that essentially allow the air to come through. So you can see that when it comes to the animal, uh, insects, it, a bit rigid structure because the exoskeletal is slightly different than the human being. Uh, they have this structure that is open and it will pass through and process. Okay, For us, you will see that <clears throat> when you breathe in, you actually have the rich gap is actually coming up and outward. So that is a breathe in. And then when you actually breathe that is a breathe out. And then when you breathe in, you have that. Uh, oh, sorry. Breathe in, you have that creature bring out and up and upward because you want to expand the rich case and fill in the air. And then when you actually exhale, breathe out, you will have the uh, rich case going down and inward. Okay? So, here is um, one of the things that is emphasized. This is like a diaphragm. Diaphragm is essentially like a thin membrane at the bottom of your lung that essentially uh, contract and relax. Then with this action, actually, it will help the uh, movement expand of the cavity and the lung to accommodate the movement of the air. Okay, we actually will go through this um, at some point in time if we have the opportunity. Right, the next one is the uh, nutrition and human digestive. So you will see that it's slightly overlapping with the previous one. Remember I was showing you the similar structure, but this one is focusing at the system level, meaning that you will essentially study into more detail of what this, what is this? This chewing, the medical terminology is mastication, for example, swallowing, deglutition, okay? All these terminology become slightly more, how should I say, fancy, but the idea is just the same. <clears throat> You, you probably at your level, you don't need to use that fancy word, but the idea is to understand the, all the steps 
that the food goes through throughout your system from the mouth to your stomach and then you have the intestine and there is what they call accessory organ that complement the activities of digestion within the system. So you have this liver, you have the stomach, uh, you have the pancreas here. So the liver essentially have the uh, productions of enzyme that actually work on the digestions of the food. Okay, next one is the transport in human and animal. So this is from your textbook. The first table here is from your textbook. Basically looking, uh, showing you the similarity. And then there is uh, another half table down there, which is showing you the differences between insect, fish, amphibian, and human. Okay, what interesting is that uh, this is pretty much my specialization because I work on cardiovascular system. So I'm actually uh, doing experiment on uh, blood vessels. So I, in fact, I even dissect the blood vessel to see whether the vessel can contract or relax. Okay, but in essence, when it comes to this topic, when it comes to transport, means it actually referring to the circulatory system. So in order <clears throat> for the gases, remember when you actually have the respiration, you inhale the uh, uh, air and then you capture the oxygen. So the oxygen essentially, they need to reach your whole body. So for them to actually they to reach the whole body, it's actually bind to the blood cells. So <clears throat> blood cell has its very much a lot of component uh, structure in it that allow it to bind the oxygen. And together within the circulation, like we talk about the red blood cells, there is also what they call, this is white blood cells, about 1%. And then these are all the fluid, which is con containing all the water you drink, all the, water, uh, all the uh, nutrient that is soluble, that is free form, that is not binded, uh, that is um, solute inside. So you have it in here as well. Uh, and then from the blood, you have it going through, all of it will go through your heart. So the heart is actually a pump that is actually um, distribute, uh, taking out, uh, pump out the blood. So then it can reach all the bodies throughout, the structure throughout the body. And additionally, I start seeing some, a few, one or two uh, pages talking about the abnormality. So that is a beauty when you actually learn at the basic level. Like over here, this is elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is actually lymphatic pleuresis. Um, it's a parasitic infection, which um, uh, is actually um, uh, carried by, uh, vector means a carrier, by the mosquito. So it is something, a uh, regular uh, diseases in tropical uh, country, tropical area, because you have a lot of um, mosquito. If you actually go to cold climate uh, country, you will hardly see mosquito. You, not to say there is no mosquito, but not as much as in the tropical area. And they can transmit disease. And one of it is this disease. And this disease essentially has so much connection towards the circulatory system. So we will not go too much on it at the moment. Next one is 11. Uh, it mean, can I just go a little bit further than 11? Are you all okay for me to talk a little bit more? 
Hello? Hello? Yes, teacher. Okay, all right. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so I I hope to just go through uh, until the end. Um, can can you can you actually um tell me or just type how far um how far have you learned in from those who are from four? How many of you from four actually? Yes, 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 me. There's 12. And now from, from the beginning, it was, okay, me. Okay, share up until what topic that you have learned so far. Hello, Shell. Can you tell me until what topic that you have covered you have studied so far in your class? Topic nine. Topic nine. Uh, can you tell me what is, I don't actually remember by heart on what topic is that? What topic is that? Is it? Okay, okay, digestion. Okay, so essentially, I think considering that I have gone through all these, so pencernaan would be digestion, it would be here. So I think we are pretty good to just stop here for now and allow me to get the breakfast because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> um, but yes. Um, overall, over here is I did actually essentially want to introduce you to all of it, but I cannot get carried away telling stories to you. But overall, um, that is pretty much the coverage. I know that for Form 5, so I do actually have to talk to the organization, uh, organizer about whether should I have another one our for form five because I find it like form five might actually need um you know yeah their own dedicated hours because uh one hour from for form four just like check Mimi one hour for form four one hour for form five that would be great but this is essentially a, a sort of trial session to see the um, the uh, interest of all of you. Um, and I actually will go through the survey to see exactly what is it that is happening at your side. And then I can essentially try to actually, at least I want you to actually get benefit and it can help your study and your exam. Properly. Although I am not a teacher that will actually do any question, but um, at least it was uh, enrich your knowledge in biology. Okay, so um, let's stop here for today. And any question, you can actually talk to your microphone one by one, not all of you together or if you are shy or you don't have access to the microphone, you can actually type your, your probably any question that you want to sort of let me know for five minutes. I'll wait for five minutes to see if any of you want to ask any question before I end the session.
No? No. But, oh. um, boleh tak saya nak cakap sikit? Yes. Um, boleh tak kalau lepas ni kita guna bahasa Melayu tak pun campur sebab saya tak berapa nak faham bahasa Inggeris. Okay. Alright. Okay. Itu je. Thank you. Who said uh, Farisha? Yes. <coughs> okay. Lagi ada soalan lain? Kalau Amy nak tanya soalan, boleh? Ah, boleh, boleh. <laughs> Uh, maybe teacher boleh share sikit uh, pasal apa uh, COVID-19 vaccine and herd immunity oh, okay. uh, oh, like when we can get our herd immunity and then what what we need to do uh, maybe some some sharing lah from oh. uh, teacher punya expertise oh okay um I think if I not mistaken, my understanding is um, that uh, we need to achieve at least 10% vaccination and we are moving towards that, but that's still a lot of vaccination required. Uh, and then uh, right now, my suggestion or my advice to everyone is to get yourself registered. Uh, those who are 18 now, you can also, your dependent, you can now also register for your children for vaccination. Okay, um, interestingly, I, saya ada satu. Saya ni kalau cakap bahasa Melayu, saya akan cakap bahasa Melayu penuh. <laughs> kalau cakap bahasa Inggeris, saya cakap bahasa Inggeris penuh. So, Kalau nak saya ulang dalam bahasa Melayu boleh but you do need to actually kind of like stop me and ask me to repeat in Malay but I have to admit my Malay sometimes can be a bit awkward canggung sikit nak cakap bahasa Melayu sebab cakap Melayu lebih kepada berborak daripada mengajar sebab saya mengajar bahasa mengajar subjek ni dalam bahasa Inggeris um, sebelum ni cikgu ajar uh, uh, sekolah med, um, universiti swasta so universiti swasta dia ada uh, even universiti uh, awam pun ada juga um, uh, sorry sorry just nak cover untuk student ni uh, universiti swasta ni um, uh, dia ada uh, pelajar antarabangsa. Pelajar antarabangsa jadi maknanya kita kena cakap memang sungguh and then kawan-kawan uh, uh, kita pencerah-pencerah uh, uh, lain juga adalah uh, antarabangsa. Ada Indian, ada Myanmar, Burmese. So saya biasa kan cakap bahasa uh, uh, English sebab nanti senang nak berbicara tanpa uh, ke kecanggungan. Okey, berbalik kepada um, immune system ada mana satu slide tadi? Okey, this is the slide. Okey, um, ada banyak, ada banyak, actually ada banyak um, uh, saya cakap kekeliruan ke apa ke, tapi when it comes to herd immunity, the idea is you have the people here. Okay, this is weakened pathogen. So basically, that is what what we have in vaccine. So called vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Vaccine tu mengandungi uh, pathogen yang dilemahkan. So pathogen ni, uh, tapi bila masuk kepada COVID-19 sebab dia virus. So pathogen ni yang selalu dalam contoh konsep-konsep uh, uh, biologi ni kebanyakannya um, dia macam uh, apa tu lah virus so tapi macam bila dia structure kan untuk COVID-19 ni virus dia ni dia dah 
sebab dah canggih ada teknologi genetik dia ada yang jenis weaken pathogen ada yang jenis you boleh tengok check uh, different different ada yang Pfizer AstraZeneca uh, Sinovac semua ada yang weaken pathogen uh, ada yang dalam bentuk mRNA mRNA is messenger RNA kalau ingat tadi uh, the nucleic acid nucleic acid tu sebenarnya messenger RNA ni ialah Uh, sejenis um, satu, satu struktur yang uh, dapat informasi daripada DNA dan dia bila dia replicate jadi DNA tapi bila dia keluar dia jadi a messenger maksudnya yang mengutuskan so pengutusan ni dia actually ditanam dalam uh, adenovirus sejenis uh, virus yang, yang boleh menampung maklumat ni dan dia dia akan bertugas untuk bawa uh, mRNA ni untuk di uh, disuntikkan ke dalam sel-sel kita supaya sel-sel kita ni akan membentuk immune response akan membentuk uh, reaksi imun yang uh, imun maknanya uh, kekebalan uh, kekebalan so then uh, kita boleh uh, melawan uh, jangkitan jika, jika uh, COVID-19 virus ni datang kat kita, badan kita ada uh, kekebalan dari segi bentuk uh, biasanya uh, antibody lah. Dalam yang paling pentingnya antibody ni adalah sejenis uh, 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 protein yang uh, diubah uh, suai untuk mengenal dia macam boleh tag, uh, macam detector. Tengok oh ni COVID-19 dia akan tag benda tu dan seterusnya uh, akan ada lain-lain uh, komponen uh, immunity yang boleh mengenal dan membuang uh, virus atau patogen ni keluar daripada badan kita. Okay. Bila kata uh, herd immunity, okay, herd immunity is uh, bermakna kelompok ni maknanya kita nak ramai-ramai orang yang ada immune, immune response. Uh, jadi uh, immune response ni Um, uh, agak agak uh, tricky what they call tricky sebab uh, kita ada juga bila bila kata virus ni ada variant uh, uh, kalau you tengok kat atas tadi tu ada uh, awal-awal slide ada pasal cakap pasal variant genetic technology jadi bila uh, cakap pasal variant ni dia boleh berubah-ubah variation Okay, variation. So bila cakap pasal variation, um, I think yang terbaru Delta yang yang uh, agak uh, infectious. Infectious maknanya dia sangat boleh berjangkit dengan orang lain. Maknanya lagi ramai orang yang boleh membawa vaksin, uh, virus ni uh, menjangkiti orang-orang lain. Okay, jadi uh, dari segi Populasi ni kalau dia orang ada immunity, uh, idea dia kalau tak kena jatuh sakit COVID-19, at least dia tak akan jatuh sakit teruk. Maksudnya um, mengalami simptom-simptom yang berbahaya. Macam uh, cikgu akan bertugas di MAIP minggu depan. So dia ada, form 4 is over, yes, yes, yes. Uh. Form 4 is over, yes. Form 5, saya punya slot sebenarnya uh, sampai pukul 11 je. Uh, ah yeah, ya, yeah. saya saya tak disediakan uh, Atika, Atika bertanya. Saya tak disediakan form 5 sebab saya fikir form 5 akan uh, ni, ni kira revisi untuk form 5. And then daripada Uh, sesi hari ni saya akan tengok berapa orang sebenarnya kalau boleh saya nak lima orang sekurang-kurangnya untuk satu kelas tapi kita tengok macam mana saya akan tengok berapa orang form 5, berapa orang form 4 uh, siapa admin? admin um... uh, hari ni kita introduction dulu lah dengan, dengan Cik Gualim Uh, so pemakluman uh, akan datang kita akan maklumkan nantilah melalui uh, Facebook dengan kita punya group Telegram. 
Ha, dan maklumkan sebab hari ni kira macam apa introduction uh, introduction untuk uh, kelas bio cikgu Alim dengan apa a uh, nama uh, akan datang kalau macam untuk form 4 kita start form 4 tapi form 5 pun uh, digalakkan masuklah kira untuk revision topik-topik form 4 and then boleh tanya sekali lah kalau ada apa-apa soalan yang nak ditanya Ha, tapi untuk kelas hari ni kira dah habis lah It's just uh, Q&A dengan uh, Cik Gualin ni lah uh-uh. Kalau ada apa-apa siapa-siapa nak tanya apa-apa soalan Yes, uh-huh. please please go Atika Okay, thank you. thank you Tak apa, tak payah sorry <laughs> Tapi uh, it's good to be very courteous I, I, One thing I like about the student um, At this level, uh, they still really Really look up at you so, Okay, go ahead, go ahead No worries, okay So okay, uh, jadi um, kalau you actually come across, okay back to admin question about the immunity herd, kalau you go back to you punya uh, calculation, uh, I think I don't know, maybe you are good at math, but somebody has made the calculation, it will not be up until end of the year, I think it will take some time, maybe up until the whole, this whole year to do a lots of high coverage in vaccination at the moment um because i'm actually working for ngo uh, volunteering bce this one tangkarang saya nak pergi saya nak pergi uh, op, uh, pejabat operasi untuk selesaikan uh, urusan-urusan pendaftaran uh, kita nak kena uh, um tembus orang, capai orang, outreach kat orang yang tak dapat pergi ke vaccination center. So we start uh, going through the phase where we provide, we go for the vaccination, mobile vaccination. So mobile vaccination will take some time, it will not be easy and uh, you have to actually use a lot of resources on and manpower. Okay, thank you Atika for coming through. Good, good, good. And then, uh, just basically don't plan any holiday this year. Uh, you want to holiday can, but at, at setempat, kat rumah, sekeliling rumah, uh, macam tu. So, virtual holiday. Virtual holiday. I, so far, I cannot go for virtual holiday. Uh, but, um, Uh, I I actually go out for exercise on regular basis, daily basis, every morning, afternoon, or almost every morning, depend on the weather. So please do that. Don't um, stay in home uh, at home so much. I mean, jangan terperuk kat rumah. Keluar lah kat luar tu. Nimati lah udara segar. Sebelum pukul 8, Udara sangat segar. Uh, memang hujan um, embun malam dengan umpun malam dengan semua udara sangat segar. So saya cadangkan tujuh suku tu keluarlah rumah pusing. Siapa yang ada office uh, office thing pun, it will not start before it. Uh, so far lah. And melainkan awak dengar ceramah lah. Ceramah, sekarang kan ada banyak ceramah Facebook. Um, ada kuliah sebelum subuh, ada kuliah selepas subuh. Kalau kuliah sebelum subuh, sebelum dalam pukul 5, kuliah selepas subuh, mungkin start dalam pukul 7 suku macam tu. So, that is the thing. So, memang kena biasakan, ha, ni lah norma baru kita ha, macam tu. Dan even next year, I still not sure. Um, so, ada banyak banyak faktor-faktor. It's not straightforward. Tapi, uh, saya nak promote lah. PCE 19 kalau ada kelapangan uh, mendaftarlah untuk ni bawah uh, namanya pun ABC 19 ancient basmi covid 19 nampak tak saya sebenarnya macam sebab saya tak nampak mana muka saya uh, okey so um, uh, jadi saya uh, galakkan Oh, okay, so, okay. Uh, so, uh, so di kadang-kadang saya nampak, kadang-kadang saya tak nampak macam, tapi nak ngajar ni, this one. So, bawah nak ma, 
uh, majlis keselamatan negara dia bukan saja setakat uh, dia tak tak terhad kepada tak terhad kepada um, uh, tenaga maksudnya kena pergi vaksin ke apa ke dia 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 juga memerlukan hikmat macam uh, informasi uh, um, bagi tahu and then kalau ada kekeliruan kita uh, boleh tolong ada juga bantuan makanan sebab macam malam tadi uh, uh, semalam ada ada satu keluarga dekat alam damai uh, keluarga Chinese uh, family uh, think it was blind ke or blind family need uh, assistant food assistant makan bihun so kita ada gerakkanlah orang untuk hantar pergi tanya apa benda nak perlu dan hantar dan rasanya kalau macam kat Putrajaya tempat saya kerja uh, tempat saya duduk ni uh, dia orang ada kumpul nama untuk bagi package makanan so um, semua-semua ni banyak NGO tapi banyak NGO mungkin kebanyakannya buat makanan tapi untuk kita kita Uh, bekerjasama dengan uh, bahagian kesihatan awam uh, Datuk Zaino dengan ada satu seorang doktor pakar juga untuk uh, meningkatkan kesedaran uh, maksudnya kita atas platform rasmi untuk menerangkan orang macam mana nak pakai mask kadang-kadang jadi macam uh, polis juga bukanlah polis apa maksudnya policing in the way that advising people politely and properly on the SOP. Okay. Uh, dan juga uh, siapa kalau join tu macam kalau siapa yang berminat nak uh, membantu dari segi uh, tapak-tapak pengambilan sampel ataupun pengurusan jenazah. Peng- Sekarang uh, yang lagi satu keperluan terdesak sebab kita ada uh, peratus kematian yang meningkat. So kita perlukan orang untuk uh, menguruskan jenazah tu dalam bentuk yang um, yang selamat untuk uh, orang yang tukang uh, tukang jenazah tu hantar jenazah. Jadi walaupun datang daripada hospital berbentuk plastik, kita perlu bantu keluarga dan uh, penggalian dan pengkembumian secara uh, selamat. So uh, tu atas benda-benda yang yang giat dijalankan lah untuk untuk um, saya punya organisasi. Jadi uh, macam tu je lah. Uh, harap bersabar. Okay. Uh, saya tahu um, bila cakap pasal duduk rumah memang kita pun mengalami tekanan mental juga duduk kat rumah ni. Tapi uh, look at the bright side duduk rumah uh, macam boleh minum air uh, all the amenities is in your vicinity so you don't need to worry about 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 it okay ada lagi soalan lain dah over okay tu saja ada uh, semua orang dah leave ke semua ada lagi kat sini. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, Admin. Saya nak minta diri dulu. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, teacher. Kita jumpa lagi. Okay, thank you, teacher. Uh, jumpa okay. lagi dalam program-program yang akan datang. Okay, okay, so far memang saya. Okay, thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye, teacher. Okay. Thank you, bye.